Well, Robin Gunn and Tricia Goyer are both accomplished authors who have made a name for themselves in the world of Christian literature. Robin Jones Gunn is the author of over a hundred books, including the popular Christy Miller series, and Tricia Goyer has over 80 published books to her name. She has a passion for helping families and youth. You guys have heard Tricia on my show a whole bunch, and together they have co-authored a book called Before You Meet Your Future Husband, which is a guide for moms to read with their daughters. This is going to be a fantastic conversation. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. Well, thank you guys for tuning in today. Before I jump in with my guests, I want to remind you that we have just started on the second half of Genesis 1 to 11. So the study that I wrote for the months of of April and May is called Supernatural, Having a Creator Changes Everything, and I'm taking women through Genesis 1 to 11. You guys can jump in and join me at faiththatspeaks.com. You know that I have a passion for seeing you guys get off the bench and onto the battlefield. I want you to think about uh, what it would look like if your faith became a faith that speaks. What would happen if your faith found its voice? What would happen if your faith found its feet? Where would God take you? What would he do? And uh, I am always so encouraged to partner with people that are really living out their faith. And when I read the biography today, kind of getting ready for today's show, I asked Robin, I was like, wait, what? You've written 100 books? And she's like, oh, yeah, like it's no big deal. I'm like, and so, and Trisha Goyer's written like over 80 books. I'm like, so between the two of you, you're like writing superheroes. Like, you know, it takes a lot of chutzpah. Uh, books do not simply write themselves. And so these women are, you know, I've only offered eight books and I kind of feel like, you know, like the brand new mom at the homeschool conference, they ask you how many kids you have and you're like, oh, I have three kids. You're feeling pretty good about yourself until the mom with 15 kids walks in. Then you're like, never mind. Uh, that's how I feel in the presence of these women. I'm so excited uh, that they're here. Robin and Trisha, welcome to the show. Thanks, Heidi. Thank you, Heidi. I always love connecting with you. Well, I'm thrilled to have you guys on. Uh, here's the thing. Let's let's just jump right into this because marriage and family is not what social media portrays mm-hmm. it to be, right? Uh, they feature glamorous images, you know, of dating and marriage. And you wake up every morning and the birds are singing and the sun is shining and you just slept with a boy who's not your husband. And somehow that's OK. And it doesn't eat away at your soul. But in reality, that's not true. And mm-hmm. actually, I I'd take it one step farther and say, and I've been talking about this a little bit more on my show lately. Uh, I think Christians need to do a better job of messaging when it comes to family life, because family is awesome. God designed it. Marriage is awesome. God designed it. But what the world is portraying uh, really isn't what it actually is. And Mm -hmm. I'm just curious. You guys wrote something that I think every mom that's listening to this and probably the daughters, too, are going to be like, oh, heck, yeah, I I need that book. What inspired you guys to write this book before you meet your future husband? Well, we probably should go back to the first book that we wrote together a number of years ago. And that one is called Praying for Your Future Husband. And Trisha and I always wanted to write a companion book before you even meet your future husband so that we can help young women get their head, their heart in alignment with what God's Word says. So when we were just friends and writing pals and um, we were at a retreat and we were by the pool during the break time, Trisha was in the lounge chair next to me, and she fell asleep. I'm writing in my journal. I think that, Lord, what do you want me to write in the next book? And how can I reach this generation? It just is burdened on my heart. And mm. she popped up and said, I think we should write a book together. And of I course said, she it was did. Holy, it was Holy Spirit inspired at that moment. And I, <laughs> I said, and, and great, what? She said, I have no idea. And we're back to fleeing. <laughs> <laughs> these but that's okay for you guys because you literally like write books in your sleep, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's I was writing went to work I was right then. Yeah. <laughs> and so there were some extraordinary God moments that happened that led us to write Praying for Your Future Husband. And over the years, we've had so much amazing yeah. feedback from readers, and we knew it was time to put our heads together again for before you meet your future husband. And the, the tricky thing about it is, is that, you know, the future husband is in there, but really it is for young women to get their heart aligned with God. Yes. So, and before you meet your future husband, we talk about your heart, your head, your mind, or your hands, but your your habits. And so mm. we have the future husband, like, even before you start thinking about this guy, are you connected with God? Is there anything you need to confess? Are you living right before him? 
Are you walking in here in his ways? Are you following the path he's designed for you? What is that? And so before you meet your future husband is just 30 devotions. They're very short. But then there's a question for each one. And then there is a prayer. It was just a prayer starter. And so, you know, and we do say like, this is preparing you if you meet your future husband. But some of you may never get married, but God has a good plan for you too. So it's a, a great way to just get young women to start thinking about themselves. Because truly, if they want this amazing God that's following God, that's serving him, that's, you know, pure, that's serving the poor, all these things, they need to look at who are they and what are they doing? What habits are they building in their lives to prepare for that future marriage? Man, so true. And the world has done a, a pretty good job of messing it up in mm-hmm. terms of, you know, what we what we expect and our misconceptions. And I'm assuming that you guys are tackling some of these. What are some of the misconceptions that young women have before they get married? You know, I think these days it's all the reels and the short videos and the isn't marriage a short though isn't it a real yeah come on isn't it real? That's i mean true. come on it is <laughs> it's these little <laughs> these little clips that are so romantic and um they see these engagements and this wedding clips and people are crying and the groom is crying as his bride comes down and even in my own home my own teenagers one of my daughters said um if my husband doesn't start crying when i walk down the aisle on my wedding day i'm going to turn and walk out Oh, and I'm no. like, oh, my word. <laughs> like, if this <laughs> is what you're concerned about is for marriage. And so they'll have the conversation about, you know, and, and I adopted them also when they were 11 to 13 year old twins and 15. So they had a lot of a lot of stuff like before they even came into our home. But it's that it needs to be romantic and dramatic in these little flashy moments. Right. We know like marriage is hard and it's hard work and it is us going before God and working on ourselves because we're not going to, we're not going to change another person. We're not going to guilt him into crying when we come down the aisle or whatever it is. And so those misconceptions, it's it's the TV shows, the music, it's all this romance, drama, breakup, get together, uh, fall in love. I mean, all the things that aren't realistic at all, as we know, when it comes to a committed relationship before God and, you know, serving together. I mean, that's completely different than what the world is offering. Mm, It's so true. Robin, how can parents help uh, preteens, especially these young girls that have been, you know, grown up on the bottle of social media? How can we help them address the issue of unrealistic expectations in our relationships? Well, we know as moms, we need to get them into God's word. So Mm -hmm. how do we do that? And in a way that they enter in and say, I want this. This is where I'm living. This is what I'm thinking. And that's another reason why Trisha and I wanted to write books about your future husband, because we knew we'd have readers that <laughs> pre work said, true. here are some biblical principles about how to get your act together. When <laughs> they, oh, funny, yeah. but A national really, not bestseller. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but to give these young hearts the understanding that we are to be in the world, but not of the world. And Trisha and I love the verse in First uh, Corinthians about how we're to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So how can we do that? Well, we enter in, and moms, this is what you, your job is, to enter in with starting at the level ground where the topic is something they want to talk about. That's why we were intentional in this book to make it very gentle, short stories, just 30 questions that will really get you to think about what we're talking about, and then a prayer. And we did that so that it would be accessible if a young woman or an older woman, any woman, wants to do it as a devotion on her own. But specifically, we had in mind, this is what a mom can do coming alongside her daughter to start those conversations. And then yeah. what God opens after that can be just life changing. Yeah, and I I think too, you know, we're we're watching a generation now that is coming, you know, sort of coming of age Nothing. that has been taught to reason with their emotions. Right, everything mm-hmm. comes from this place of emotional um, instability. Really, I mean, this is what we're seeing on college campuses. We absolutely see this on our on our uh, our high school campuses. And we want to be sure as mothers, I mean, I have five daughters, right? And I know because uh, two of my daughters are married and and uh, three of them are, I, I guarantee you, thinking about getting married. 
And I think as moms, we really want to help our daughters be emotionally ready, right? Be emotionally prepared and matured uh, to be in a marriage relationship, a committed marriage relationship. So how can a young woman and a young mother help her daughters get to that place? Yeah, and I think it is when we are having these conversations with them, um, we can talk about emotions. And like yesterday, you were so upset about whatever it is. Are you still upset about that? Well, no. You know, and talk about our emotions <laughs> go up and down. They toss us to and fro, but the God's word is the thing that stays the same. And, you know, I took two of our girls um, on a overnight weekend trip so we could just have these conversations. The first two hours, they didn't want to talk about any of the stuff I wanted to talk about. It's like, let's not talk about that. But the more we spent time together, the more I would share stories from my life. And that's what we do in the book too. I, I share my mistakes. I was a teen mom uh, at 17. I had an abortion when I was 15. I talk about the mistakes I made. And I think so many times we want to hide our mistakes because we were like, oh, we don't want our kids to know. But if they Mm. can see like, this is a mistake. This is what I learned. I wish I can go back and do things differently. But these are, these are what my emotions were at the time. I was looking for love in all the right, all the wrong places. I wasn't seeking God's will. I wasn't prayerfully bringing myself before him. I wasn't praying for that future person. So when the emotions of the moment are there and this guy, the really cute quarterback asked me to go on a date with him, like all the emotions are there. Yeah. You're like, Hey, he's cute. Yeah. He's cute. And wow. He likes me. And so, you know, just all those emotional ways, but it does take time. Like it's not a conversation where all of a sudden we're like, okay, ladies, we got the book. Let's sit down. Let's talk about these things. It does take time. Read a, read one devotion today tomorrow you can bring up another devotion the the emotional conversation will come out but it does take us investing in just the face-to-face time or the side-to-side time as we're on a trip as we're going out for a smoothie as we are investing in them i think it's so easy just to think like i'm going to give them three things don't do this and that's the end of the conversation and we're not truly digging in and going deeper with their heart and with what they're feeling that's the Trisha Goyer uh, rendition of Deuteronomy 6, I think. There we go. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Well, and I can add to that because now that our daughter is grown and married and has children of her own, she brought up to someone, and I was so surprised just listening to her, saying, oh, the best thing my mom did was pretty much every night she'd come in and bless me and pray with me and ask if there was anything going on. And then the, that became our chance to process and talk. And yes, there were many other things I could have been doing at that time, mm. but it was a pattern of being intentional of, I want relationship with you. I am, I only have eyes for you. Just, I want to connect. And that then rolled into the high school years and the college years. And then now that she's married, we still have that open communication. So that's probably the biggest step for mom. And that's why we wanted to create a tool if you need a you know, resource to kind of get your way into a conversation like that, start here. I love that. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the book. So you guys focus on three areas in the book, right? You focus on heart, head, and hands. What does that mean? Well, we do that it, if the heart isn't right with God, then if it's just a bunch of words, even if they go through the whole book, blah, yeah, blah, blah. Yeah. So we started there, like, what's in your heart? What needs to be removed? forgiveness for things that you've held on to or that Mm. kind of um, clutteredness, but needs to be cleared away. And then we went on to your head, your thoughts, your everything that you are holding on to as, well, this is what a relationship should be like, or "This this is what I deserve, or just do you have thinking errors that need to be addressed? And then hand we really love that section because it's, what? who are you? And what is in your hand right now that God has done? You be about that. Mm. You, you um, stir up the gift that is in you and see how God leads you into what's next, whatever that may be. But if your heart is right with him and your head has correct thinking and you start to focus on what you can do, then we, we're going to be seeing a lot more healthy young women who are ready for the next season of life. Yeah, and this is a really challenging time to raise children. This is a very challenging time oh, to yeah. be a teenager. Uh, the, the 
the lies that our kids are being fed are everywhere around them, stealing their identity. So much of this is about identity. And I know for, for me, as I'm watching my daughters, you know, I have a 31 year old daughter. She's got four children and I also have a 12 year old and I'm raising my 12 year old in a much different yes. world than I raised my 31 year old daughter in. And you guys have been talking about uh, just bringing back the heart of Christ, it sounds like, into our lives so that we can have a healthier approach to it. But how do you guys think that this book can help young women find a more peaceful approach to dating instead of this, you know, sort of chaotic thing that we see so often uh, on social media and portrayed in magazines and stuff like that? Because that's not the heart of God either, is it? Right. It's really getting their eyes focused in the right places. Um, so if they are focused on God and they're they're using these gifts that he gave them to grow their gifts, to learn who they are, to discover those things, then they aren't so focused on the guy sitting two pews over or that guy I met at co-ops. It's like they're content because God is in their heart and God is yeah. using them and growing. And then they're not so busy just scoping out this guy. And that, that was me in high school. I was like, oh, I like <laughs> him and I like him. And oh, does he like me? It was all the focus. Uh, was on the guys around us. And if we get to focus on, look at what God has planned for you. Look at these yes. dreams that you have inside. Look at who he designed you to be. You and your friends, what can you do together to seek him, to love him? I mean, then their focus is on using who using the gifts God gave them, becoming who God designed them to be. Then they're not going to be so focused on the guy. Also on the guys that, okay, just because he's cute, uh, then that needs to be the reason I'm going to date him. No. What about his heart? You know, what about his mind? What about his? And we talk about those things too. What about his habits? What is he doing? Is that in line with God's word? And we found, um, you know, th this book is just releasing. So we haven't got feedback on this one, but from praying for your future husband, there is young women that read the book and they're praying for, I pray for godliness and I pray mm. for peace in his heart. And, and they realize like the guy I'm dating now is not the guy that God has for me because I don't see these things in his life. And so we've had n numerous letters from people like I, I was in this, I was getting ready to get engaged. I was, was headed, headed on this path and reading through this and understanding God's heart and understanding God's heart for marriage and family. Mm -hmm. I just realized like I'm with the wrong guy. And then yeah. later we've gotten wedding invitations two years later and, but I met the right guy and we're on this path in ministry or whatever. And it really is it's taking our eyes off of this guy, that guy, does he like me into who has he decided me to be and how can I serve God with my life? And basically we're telling them, you're going to be walking this path with God and someone's going to come along beside you. And it's going to be this way that you could work together, minister together. He has a plan for both of you and he's out there right now. So yes, we do want you to pray for him, but also look at yourself. And I think you were mentioning the culture, Heidi, in uh, the girls I've worked with in inner city Little Rock. They don't even know anyone that's married. They mm. don't know anyone that is in a committed relationship. They have multiple kids by different guys. Their moms, one young lady I knew, had seven kids by seven different guys. All of them were in and out of jail. And so trying to even, okay, I remember when I had our first meetings, it would be like, okay, what do you want for marriage? What questions do you have? And they're like, I'm not getting married. And so like, how can I even have a conversation about how to choose a spouse when they aren't even thinking that direction because they've never even seen it. We were, we had probably 30 girls in this room when I was bringing this up. And I said, how many of you have seen a healthy relationship, which is something that you would want to model. And one young woman had an aunt and uncle that was in a healthy committed relationship. And so they aren't even focused on that. And so I've said, okay, like if you want to get married, what kind of guy would you want? And at first they wouldn't even answer that, but then they would say, okay, well, he can't be in jail. I'm like, okay, well, we got to raise our standards up higher than that girl. So, okay, we write that down. He's not in jail. He's he not loves, in jail. He, he loves his mom. He's not on. He's not on drugs. He's not in a gang. Like we were writing this list, and then I'm like, okay, let's take some positive things. Um, he could keep a job. He's faithful. He has hmm. integrity. He tells the truth. And they're like, wow, those are those guys out there. I'm like, I didn't think so because the guys I was dating in high school were not like that. But I started praying. And God brought me my husband now. We've been married 33 years. Um, you have to pray, but you also, you know, look for these qualities. And we wrote them up there. And I said, would you want to marry a guy like that? And they're like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, now who do you need to be to attract a guy yeah. like that? And they're like, 
Miss Trisha, you fooled us. That's, that's not fair. <laughs> they have to have integrity and be faithful and be truthful mm. and be seeking God. And so it really started getting them to think about, okay, this is a possibility. Because the culture today is even saying this isn't even a possibility to have a healthy marriage. This mm. is a possibility, but this is the guy I would want to be in a relationship with. And who do I need to be? You know, it's so interesting, Trisha, because I, I kind of have become sort of known uh, out on the speaker circuit for just telling parents you can't give what you don't have, yeah, right? Yeah, you can't pass on yeah, what you don't yeah, possess. Yeah, yeah. And you're kind of saying you can't attract what you don't have, right? Right. So if if you don't have that heart to follow yeah. Jesus, you're going to have yep. a real hard time yep. attracting a man mm-hmm. who wants to follow God because he's looking for that. Uh, he's looking for that character quality in you, that kindness, that gentleness, uh, that desire to be the person that God wants you to be. It's so good to remind our our kids, and honestly, it's good to remind ourselves, too, that that's ultimately the goal. We're just about out of time for today, but uh, one of the things I want people to understand about this, it really is a guide for mothers to read with their daughters or a great book for young women to read together. Is there anything else that you want people to know about uh, this book uh, so that they can go out and purchase it and know exactly how to use it to the very best that they can? Well, mothers with daughters, but also if young women gather together and go through it together. Trish and I have both done a number of small groups with young women when we were going through Praying for Your Future Husband. And we were amazed at how it, that peer pressure is in the right direction. Yeah, it's have some positive peer pressure for change. Role modeling, yes. And then there, um, especially the last group that I met with, I had them break up so that each week they had a prayer partner and they would pray for each other. Well, many of them are married now, and I have seen their um, pictures, and I see that one of the bridesmaids is the pal that was praying for them as they went along. But as we talked, then you could see that they had so many misconceptions, but then there'd be someone in the group who would have, as Trish was saying, a healthy role model relationship that they could share about. And that's also why this book is a real perfect introductory tool for small groups. I love that. Well, uh, you guys, this is fantastic. Robin Gunn and Trisha Goyer, I just appreciate so much you coming on the show and talking to us a little bit about what it looks like to shepherd our young girls all the way through to marriage or to whatever it is that God wants them to do by pointing their hearts toward Jesus. That's really what this is all about. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. It's just been a real blessing to have you here. Thank you, Heidi, for having us. You guys are scheduled for a happy hour. If you're subscribed to the show, stick around and we'll be right back. For those of you who are new to the Heidi St. John podcast, I want to just thank you so much for listening today. You can find the show notes at HeidiStJohn.com forward slash podcast. If you have a question that you would like to submit, I answer those questions. I try to at least every single week on Monday. Sometimes my friend, Dr. Mark Sherwood comes on to join me. So if you got questions about health or whatever it is that's on your mind, we'd love to hear from you. The way to do that is to reach out to me, HeidiStJohn.com forward slash mailbox Monday. If you're interested in my women's Bible study, you can find it right now by going to faiththatspeaks.com. Have a great day, everybody. And I will see you right back here tomorrow at the intersection of faith 